I was thinking I would just steal your camera and then you would you would just eat so that you don't have to eat on camera. On New Year's Eve, just hours before the clock rolled over to 2024, I invited some of my YouTube friends onto my nine hour marathon live stream for a quick chat. Here are some highlights from my conversation with Lillian Karabayek. Wow. Aaron, your studio is um hard to get around in. Yes. <laughs> Um, that is true. <laughs> Man, there's so many boxes in here. Some of them are for the gear that I'm going to be shipping out to people who are buying my gear. Okay, so. you say that, but you say that literally every time, and you're constant. There, there every time I came, boxes every the last time, time we were here. <laughs> you also say that, but I don't believe it. <laughs> um, and it might be a problem that it isn't visually evident that there's less boxes. Fair. <laughs> This is actually just the Lily gives Aaron crap about how much stuff is in his studio. Yeah. Oh, we got people saying hi, Lily. Hello. Okay, you're going to keep people entertained for a little while while okay. I eat some pizza. The pizza is really good. I, I already ate my half of the pizza, so Aaron only has half of the pizza. But I was... We have food that I could cook in my fridge, and I was going to cook, and I had a plan to cook, and then uh, I was really drained from... Uh, only 10 hours of live radio this weekend over two days, unlike Aaron's going on hour number nine in a row. But uh, I was very drained. And then I checked my budget and I had $99 left in the restaurant category. Uh, so I made an executive decision that we were going to get pizza. We don't talk about boxes on this channel. You say that, but I could just keep I could just keep pulling them out. There's just so, there's just, I don't have to even move from my spot. There's just, there just keeps being boxes. Um, Aaron, Aaron hides the studio from me. I can't get that far into the middle of the frame because uh, I need to be able to read the screen and I didn't bring my glasses. Sadly, there's not a million people listening to this channel, at least right now. Nils, I will also say a million people were probably not listening to me this morning because... Uh, it's this is the time of year when people don't tune in to broadcast. So <laughs> every time I screwed up, which I actually I did do the last two hours of air. Normally, the last two hours on Sunday are super easy because um, we rebroadcast the same hour three times. So like, yeah, I have live breaks that I do, but like I'm I'm actually really sick of the stories by the third hour unless there's like breaking news that changes things. And I was just the last two hours. Normally they're just like on Sunday. I'm just like, Psh, no problem. But I was like I was having trouble saying words that I normally know how to say where, you know, that thing where you know how to say a word, but then your eyes will suddenly stumble over it, which is like I literally get paid to not to pronounce words and read, read things. Um, and I was like stumbling over my own copy that I'd written myself. So I wasn't, I would say that probably more of the me screwing up was in my head. Although at one point we've been having problems with the board. And at one point I put something in queue and then I got a text from my coworker who said, Hey, I think that clip that you just played in queue. Cause I was trying to preview it went out on air. So that's really great. Uh, <laughs> True, if you have a lot of people stuck in traffic or at work, you've got yourself a captive audience. Yeah, we're we're the um, public broadcaster for the entire state of Oregon, which is also why I have to read 18 signal IDs at the every hour. Um, so yeah, and we have the we're the largest radio broadcaster uh, for the state, like in terms of ratings. So um, although this month we did get our annual beating by the Christmas station. <laughs> so <laughs> the Christmas music station always wins out because people don't want to hear about the news. And I, I will have to say, this year the news has been really tough. I know we've been saying that like every year, but the news has been really tough. And I can understand if you're, if you don't need to be up on the news for work or whatever, just being like, I'm done. I should have cut to a box camera when I was your guest. <laughs> I have a chair full of boxes. <laughs> I guess I just deal with my boxes maybe like a little faster. I don't order nearly as many boxes as as Aaron does, but I do also planner stuff is smaller than camera stuff, which is the stuff that I tend to order, but I'm actually doing a six month stationary no buy, which shouldn't be that hard, but it, 
I was a little stressed out about it enough that I ordered some uh I ordered some like last minute pens on Amazon Prime because I was like, oh no, I need a pen. I need a mechanical pencil. I need a pen. So uh what kind of pizza? I'm hungry now. It is actually technically a it is a vegan bacon gar garlic cheesy bread. It's a um Detroit style vegan pizza. There it's really good. I I normally would go out and pick it up, uh, but I, I've been up since before 3.30 in the morning because the kittens woke me up even before my alarm at 3.30. So I have an issue when I read the same word too many times. Yeah, Bailey, I, one of the things that I, I didn't like verbally screw it up, but I normally read all of our signal IDs like super fast because we have to read them every hour. If you're not in the US, we have this thing called the Federal... And if, I guess if you're not in broadcast, we have this thing called the FCC here, and they require that radio stations read the um, signal ID for the radio broadcast band that they're on every hour within like two minutes of the top of the hour. And it's not a big deal on most stations. It's just a thing you get used to doing uh, when you're on radio. But since I started working at this station, we have repeaters for the whole state, and our state is the size of Germany. Uh, because of that, there we read 18 signal IDs at the top of the hour. And one of them is just at the end. And I, I normally can read them so fast. You know, I have them all memorized and it's just KHRV. And I like, I just like took this weird extra pause when I was reading it. So yeah, you have to pay to see boxes with Aaron. <laughs> I mean, I will say that this, this studio room that we're in was originally conceived of as a shared office space um that is not a possible thing anymore uh but i do appreciate that aaron recognized that that was never going to happen and uh gave me what was conceived of as a shared office in the house that we are building which is you can learn more about on the house files uh as my exclusive office before we had even really finished like the final iterations of design of the house, we kind of started to accept that maybe we need to just have separate offices because um, this space had been had spent the past three years getting rapidly filled up with stuff. Why don't we put the 18 station IDs on a cart? Um, because live radio. Hello, please keep me employed. <laughs> um, the. We also could probably automate it. Um, we could also maybe do like there is technology that would allow us to like halt the repeaters and essentially have the station ID for like the rural parts of Oregon where we're reading a signal ID, which doesn't have a very big audience like that could be automated. But the cost is like not really worth it. And also we have a lot of investment in um, live radio and the having live announcers. And so anytime we're doing something as a cart or a track, it's just not really ideal. 17 repeaters, even for public radio, is a lot. Well, Oregon is a big state. <laughs> um, it's actually more than 17 repeaters, but it's it's 18 signal IDs. So it's that's how many have licenses that need to be read. <laughs> Um, and my voice actually goes out on air to a couple st stations that don't do that. I don't read the signal IDs for and then are read by a live host just because of like some of our licensing deals with other ones. Anyway, this isn't about my day job. Um, here's the thing I will say about because we were discussing earlier kind of the difference between live versus um, edited videos and something that I really did not realize how much I take for granted I edit audio like I I spend like about 10 to 15 hours of my week editing audio for my job and I am fast and fairly good at editing audio even when I have to do post processing on it and clean up and the tools in Audition have gotten so much better and I oh IT just let me upgrade my laptop and so now I'm on like the more recent version of audition because I was stuck on audition 2019 um, for like IT reasons because it needed to work with 
our ingest software, which is called Dillette. So if you work in broadcast, you've probably heard of Dillette. It's our media asset management software that, that connects to our DAD, which is our um, what we use for broadcast and automation. The uh, So anyway, I really took it for granted how fast I could edit audio. And then I've been working on kind of working with our digital video team because we actually also have a television um, station. Uh, mo it's mostly we're mostly just a broadcaster for PBS. So we do produce like award Emmy award winning documentaries. I am not in with that team. I'm on the radio side mostly. So like I see those people and I work with those people. But but generally they're not terribly well integrated with radio. But We've been I've been kind of working to try to get the video and the radio sides to like interact more where I'm at because I have a lot of flexibility on my non broadcast days as a weekend host. So I wanted to produce digital videos to both promo and um, like kind of as like little mini versions of a radio feature that I did. And it had to be less than 60 seconds because it had to be a vertical video for social. And I cannot believe how much time editing a 60 second vertical video took compared to editing audio. And one of the big, like, frustrating parts about it was how much more work you have to put into getting the files around because I'm constantly moving files around. That's like a, a big part of my job. They're audio files. They're audio files for going over broadcast radio. So like they're so tiny, the main way I get things to myself is I slack them to myself. And it turned out that like getting things from our work iPhone 15 that we were using to shoot on location and then like getting them onto a computer <laughs> and edit it, it was just a real, it was a real challenge, especially because we don't, um, unfortunately, my work computer is not a Mac, but the phone that we have for shooting vertical video on for work is an iPhone 15, like whatever the new one is. But I couldn't just airdrop files to myself. And it turned out that like getting files off of this work phone was a whole nine yards, um, especially because our single sign on at work related to Aaron's data, uh, but our single sign on at work is Microsoft and um, it wasn't terribly possible to log into my personal Microsoft, like my account on there. And I just really, I really appreciate how small audio files are. Do you want me to show you some footage of the, <laughs> I was thinking about doing a little behind the scenes um, video when I was at work earlier. So I shot some video and if Aaron can play the, this vertical video, might be too fast of a, I was spinning around in my chair. So this is not maybe the best. <laughs> I haven't looked at any of these videos since I took them this morning. <laughs> this is an interesting question. Sounds like the iPhone cho choice wasn't well thought out. Actually, it was perfectly well thought out. It is a ploy from the um, digital video department to let IT let them buy Macs again. <laughs> A couple of them actually have Macs that are like not integrated with the rest of the systems. We used to have Macs before I worked there. Everybody had Macs. And then in January 2020, they switched over everybody over to Windows computers in order to work with Dillette, which is the media asset management software that we use. Um, and uh, everybody hates it. <laughs> and, you know, really hates it? The video editors. <laughs> and so the iPhone 15 was... Uh, a choice for a couple of its features, but also, I believe, for interoperability with the Macs within the video department, because most of our video editors for broadcast and for our documentaries use Macs, and the digital video department wants them. So we're an organization of more than 200 people, so they want everything to work together. Um, and we also, just because we're a media organization, we do have a lot of security risks as far as there's a there's a lot of management that needs to happen, uh, and uh, it turns out when you run a broadcast radio station, you're, you're talking about this or broadcast television station. We were talking about this earlier. Is a that's a lot of power and that's a lot of gigs because <laughs> we also stream, um, 
And last weekend, on Christmas weekend, when I should have been one of the only people in the building uh, on the weekend, unfortunately, a ton of our crew had to come in because a random air conditioner burned out inside of our server room. And um, the server room is so large there. I absolutely cannot show you photos of that because I'm pretty sure that's like against all sorts of security rules for this <laughs> station. Um but the server room there is so big and so packed that within one fan of burning out, which, by the way, it took like hours to figure out where the burning smell was coming from, um, the server room was up to like 95 degrees. <laughs> and that was when it was like 25 Fahrenheit outside. So uh, do some con conversions here. It was below freezing outside. So it was like, I think like negative three Celsius outside. And it was over 35 degrees Celsius inside of TechCore. I guess all of our Europeans probably went to sleep, so the Canadians will just have to do the math themselves. Um, sorry for being the hegemonic United States with our dumb systems. You're everywhere. This is why there's so many boxes. <laughs> um, this is exactly what happened to a certain broadcast engineer we had on the channel today. 100 Fahrenheit server room. <laughs> Do you work at my organization? I'm so sorry. Um, what ended up being, I just felt so bad uh, because on Christmas weekend, when a lot of people had family in town and were not planning on working, they had to essentially have someone guarding because we couldn't get anybody to fix the AC when it burned out on a Saturday morning. At like, I, it burned out, I think at like, I got there at five and uh, there was already some facilities people there trying to figure out what was going on. I think it burned out at like 4.30 in the morning. So they had to like staff all weekend because they could not get an AC person in until Tuesday after the Christmas holiday. So they had to staff like someone just watching massive industrial fans blowing from the outside into the inside to keep the server core cool, which is just really scary. And yeah, they, they also had some, like our contracted security firm, like brought in some extra people to like guard it. And all they were doing was because we had, we were like blowing across the hallway and like through two rooms. I hope I, I don't think I'm revealing any critical information. <laughs> now I'm like, oh no, oh, uh, I don't think I'm revealing any critical information. That can't easily be found out by someone that was trying to find it out. Uh, yeah, they they everything's fixed now, by the way, too. So this is already said and done. Luckily, it was cold outside, I guess. But a ton of people had to like work shifts in between like going home with their families. And it just really sucked. Benjamin says, nice to see y'all's faces. Miss being your neighbor. Yeah, you'll have to come visit. Uh, have to come visit. Maybe not this house, but you could come visit our kittens. We visited your kittens when they were kittens. Now we have kittens, so. <laughs> Stop and think says, Lily, I worked in broadcasting in the 1960s. 15 millimeter film transferred to two inch videotape. You've got it relatively easy. I Yes, I agree. <laughs> Although I will say we are, we are expected and required to, as broadcast journalists these days, to be in so many more formats, right? And like things are expected to be transferred. I mean, all content creators kind of find this now is that you're expected to be on so many different platforms. But with radio losing audience and like young people not knowing what radio is and that audience moving to other platforms, there is this push for radio people to like use our skills on other platforms while simultaneously doing what, we, what we're also doing. And I, I do think that like, the having to juggle like I'm and just like the sheer like I'm I'm going out and I'm getting a field story and I'm juggling like my very expensive mics and recorders and equipment and everything and interviewing people. But then I also am expected to take still pictures for the web portion. And then I'm also expected to take vertical video for like social media. And then I have to edit this piece into three or four different versions. So, yeah. So we've been asking uh, guests a couple of questions as they join. So yeah. um, I'm not going to have any useful answers to no, any of these. Sure, sure you will. <laughs> I uh, first of all, 
introduce yourself. Oh, hi. And your YouTube channel, which is linked down below. <laughs> I failed to do that at all. Um, hi, I'm I'm Lillian. I, I live above this studio. Uh, I'm known as Anomalily on the internet. And my channel is, we pretend we're a finance channel, but actually we're a channel about planners. <laughs> And it's a long running joke, but I've been live streaming every week for uh, well over 200 weeks uh, at this point, like since early 2020. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or actually, I think end of 2019 is when we started. So I talk about economics. It's called Talking Dough and Eating Donuts. I talk about economics and I eat a vegan donut and... We rate the donuts. And right now, because we have kittens and I'm streaming from the apartment, uh, that means the kittens are often regularly a feature of the streams. So they've been getting less and less productive and on topic since we got the kittens. Pretty much. <laughs> but it's been giving me a good chance to try out some uh, behind from gear for kitten cams. So I'm running the kitten cam now from the Mage Well Director Mini. So I have a multicam sub stream yep. that I feed you one feed from and then you can cut it into your show. But well, did you explain the Mario Kart setup? Did you explain? I don't that? think I did explain the Mario Kart setup, actually. OK, so um, I'm going to explain the premise of what it was. And then let's see if you can explain how you did it. So there is a like a Mario Kart game for the Switch that has an IRL component. So it has a little RC car that looks like the Mario Kart car. And you can drive it around and you can, in your apartment, set up these cardboard arrows and the car kind of navigates in virtual reality. We managed to, on a live stream, have the kittens, a kitten cam of the kittens IRL chasing it. And then also the video from the RC camera. So how did you get it in there? Yeah. So let me skip to where think, we were. I mean, it was like much most, the whole stream. most of the stream. <laughs> So this is what, so it, the car has a little camera on it. And then, so like what you're seeing there is partially real car, but then the Mario character is, is 3D. But then what you're in, everything else in the camera is real. It's like, you know, it's like looking at the room. So it has a wireless video link back to the switch. So on the switch, what you're seeing is this, this is like what I'm seeing on the switch as I'm driving it around. And, um, it's doing the augmented reality, like putting the little, you know, gems and stuff in, in real life, which is hilarious. But basically, the Switch is just connected over HDMI into the uh, Mage World Director Mini, which I was using for this. So I had the, uh, I was, the Switch is in this little dock, so I had a little monitor in front, mirroring that out back into the Director Mini so I could stream it. And then I could switch between the game and then like my iPhone camera for a close up of the cats or whatever. I think you went far enough in where the cats are kind of bored with it already. Oh, you're right. We should go back to the beginning. The cats did learn the root of the car, though, and then they would wait around corners for it. It was pretty great. Uh, but yeah, just, you know, capturing the the, the screen from, from the switch and then that uh, because it was the Mage Well Director Mini that was doing um, NDI feed over the network to the to Lily's Apple TV, which was pulling the feed from that. So it worked really well. <laughs> and they look giant. I love it. Oh, here's an actual question for you from Nils earlier. Is the CMS integrated into Audition as a plugin? Um, so this is the media asset management system we use is not our, our content management system, just to really add some fun um, to it. Our media asset management system is what we use to ingest like all of the video that they use for shooting documentaries, you know, the thousands of hours of video that they shoot. Um, a lot of what we, a lot of like what our station produces is um, like Oregon Field Guide, like documentaries about nature where they do like these amazing things about Oregon backcountry or about tribal lands and stuff in our area. Um, so the, uh, Media asset management system is integrated to Audition, but it is not integrated to our content management system that runs our website. <laughs> um, so, but our uh, media asset management system is integrated to our CMS through a long link. So you've got Audition, 
And then from Audition, you can push via this terrible thing called Delete Extend um, that works sometimes <laughs> when you're on VPN, if you're working from home, or like sometimes you need to be on VPN even when you're in the office hard hardwired because it, um, ha it has a lot of failure points. So use Delete Extend and you can push it in um, either, you can also push it directly into our broadcast um, air-gapped system uh, that is what we use actually to get audio out to broadcast. So I don't play things. When I'm playing things on the radio, there's still one more step from where we put the final audio stories. So when reporters file, they put it into that, um, uh, into the media asset management system called Dillette. And then the announcers, whoever's playing it on air, the host will then take another button and push it into our air gapped system. And there's a, there, even though it's air gapped, there's this tiny little thing that goes somehow into it that I am not paid enough to understand how it works. Um, but I do know that it breaks and when it breaks, it causes a lot of stress. So, uh, which is just generally how technology that you want to work does. So all of those things kind of integrate with audition, but the reason that we needed, uh, yeah, that's that Dillette Extend is the reason that everybody st was stuck in Audition 2019 and couldn't get Audition 2023. <laughs> I think the thing with Dillette is, um, it is, it's a very powerful software, but it has to be like extensively custom built. And we had to work with them for quite a long time to custom build it. But it sounds like it was one of those very classic things that happens with a lot of these large enterprise software, which is that like the sales team promises you the moon. And then by the time it gets to engineering, you realize that like, yeah, they when they say it works with audition, what they fail to mention is it only works with a five-year-old version of audition, <laughs> you know? Um, I know like your channel is not about gear, but yeah. you do buy things. Yeah. And you can answer this in the context of your own channel, which is planners. What is the thing that you most enjoyed using that you bought in 2023? Oh, um, actually, I, I think I can probably answer that with video gear. Mm. Um, I so one, I didn't buy it, but your new Osmo pocket is so cool. And I really want it because I I've now repurchased the Osmo pocket. Like I oh, right. I had it and I've lost I left it on a train somewhere in Slovakia and I bought another one because I loved it so much. And it's my most like functional, like out and about camera. And I'm really excited about the one problem that I was running into is that more and more what I'm being asked to do is vertical video. Um and the Osmo Pocket is not actually great for the the Osmo Pocket 2 is not actually great for forming vertical video. Um, I will also say, I believe I acquired this at the very, very beginning of this year. Um, the rainbow light that I have, oh, I think I got yeah. it in January. And so I think it technically fits into this year. Um, and I would have to dig up the brand name of it. That one's an it's a, 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 Aperture. Yeah. So Aperture... Rainbow, rainbow, it has a lot of different settings. Um, like we that. even used it to light up our haunted house, like oh, our yeah. three-story haunted house. And uh, it's this one. it's fairly pricey, but I would say it's really high quality. And also it's magnetic and the magnet, uh, magnetized back works pretty well. And it's not pricey in the scale of lights. It's like pricey in the scale of like, there are cheaper, like, colored background lights, but um, it does a lot, and it's very powerful. The, so. the key thing this one has is that it has multiple segment LEDs that you can change individually, so you can do, like, animated gradients instead of just, like, all one color. Yeah. That's, like, its key feature. It's um, so much more flexible. It's very cool. So the other question is, what are you most excited about new gear coming in 2024? Okay. Is there anything you're like planning on buying or or I'm very slow to buy gear because mm. essentially what I do is I just wait to inherit what Aaron is downgrading, which works extremely well. It's a um, wonderful upgrade program I'm on mm -hmm. where things just appear <laughs> <laughs> on my desk. Um, but I I am probably hoping to buy the Osmo Pocket 3 this year. And then the other thing that I want, but like I need to I need to prove to myself that I will use it. 
<laughs> is that I really want to buy one of the cinematic like sliders that you can put your phone or your camera on. Uh, there's there's a couple that are in the, like the two hundred dollar price range, which is not so much that it's unaffordable, but enough I need to know that I'm not going to just buy it and then not use it um, because I can think of a lot of shots I would like to set up with it. Um, yeah, we're talking about the ones that are uh, motorized where it can just like auto. I, I want to get yeah. these beautiful panning shots of myself. Like that's the, a lot of my uh, photography background was that I participated. If you remember Flickr back when it was a vibrant community for many years, um, I participated in the 365 communities on there where you would take a self portrait every day for a year. And there was a lot of very artistic photography that people did you in the 365 community i've like met lifelong friends that i still stay in touch with that i've stayed with in foreign countries through through the 365 project but because of that i often think about things in terms of filming myself because it made me very good at sitting up setting up a tripod in a foreign country and then jumping over and over to get the perfect shot a lot of which is way easier now with iPhones and everything cuz i used to call around my giant dslr everywhere mm -hmm. And before that, I actually used to haul around my SLR back before it was digital um, and set it up on a tripod like in foreign countries. And um, so anyway, I really want the cinematic slider. OK, I've That's... now just listed. I'm, am I allowed to have four? You can have four if you want. Yeah. OK, the last thing I kind of want, but I kind of want someone to tell me if it's worth it is I kind of want this Pivo um, tracker thing. And this is because I'm a figure skater. If people have seen Pivo, it's very much in like the prosumer category of goods. And it is a um, a tripod for your phone, but it will swivel and do automated tracking. And one problem I have with the Osmo Pocket is the Osmo Pocket is good at tracking if someone's holding it. It can't really follow. It won't swivel the head to follow when it's on a tripod. Maybe the 3 has done a better job of that. But it's just not really set up for that. And the, the Pivo would actually, like, I'd be able to set up my phone on the edge of the rink and it would follow me because the Osmo Pocket really had trouble keeping up with me at the speed I was without a camera operator. Like, it's good at following and smoothing the shot when someone is skating, but I don't have anybody that is able to skate and follow and film me because every time I've tried to get Aaron to film me uh, on ice skates, it hasn't. It has not, it has not worked. It has not worked. I am not good great. enough for that. No. Oh, that's a related question. Uh, are you doing a lot of ice skating these days? Uh, yeah, I'm doing I'm doing a little less this month just because this is the one month of the year that everybody remembers they like ice skating. <laughs> and so the rink is really, really crowded right now. But yeah, um, yeah. I'm, I'm still on the ice. No, you do. You do a lot. You know what? I was looking for that audio interface yesterday. <laughs> I was like, I swear I have a USB audio interface around here somewhere because I needed to plug in. <laughs> my mixer to the computer over USB and I ripped out its USB port for, as we don't mentioned earlier, I was like, I swear I have this mixer somewhere. And I went and looked at my Shopify. I was like, oh yeah, I sold it. I like the idea of calling it crazy Aaron's discount warehouse, because if I look around this room and I pretend that I'm walking into like a, like a pawn shop run by someone obsessed with video gear, I feel more okay yeah. about it. I mean, in it's fact, it's like much cuter decoration than yeah. your average crazy discount warehouse shop. It's, it's a lab. It's a it's a it's a video lab. And it in some places looks more like that than others. See, this is why I think it would be fun to have my planner channel. I just like fully admit that it was a planner channel because yeah. then I could justify all of my stationary purchases. Yeah. My executive decision is that I don't think I can do three more hours. <laughs> What if you just hand over your stream key to the people that have agreed? Have you had all your guests on? I've had all the guests that are like, were like 100% confirmed at a certain time on. I have two more people who said they were going to join, but we hadn't worked out an exact time yet. So they have, not been res they have not responded yet. So I assume they're busy with plans now at this point. So countdown till New Year's in Greenland, or at least parts of it. As I was looking up the data for this, turns out Greenland has a lot of different time zones. Great. So Are you kicking me out? I'm going to kick you out. I'm going to get on Zoom with Bailey, and we will chat. Thanks for letting me all crash the stream. Thanks for letting me have a break to eat. <laughs>